and paper are great, but these days kids are moving on to tablets. Okay, they've been around for a while, but uh, it seems like tablets are the way to go if you are trying to get into tattooing, simply because they just make stenciling easier. All the things you can do with Procreate. You can draw in it. You can trace stuff. You can put things on there from the internet. You can liquefy things on there from the internet. You can export things from there. You can free transform. You can free it. You can move things around and procreate. You can make brushes. It's a little bit like Photoshop, but not easier. And you can mock up giant, beautiful, conceptual designs from pieces of famous people's body parts and flowers. Flowers, monkeys, <laughs> all the things. Everything is easier with procreate. So. Uh, go ahead and invest in Apple uh, with their nice tablet product called the iPad. Have you heard of it? Yes, you can find them on Amazon actually. We ended up doing the, the payment plan. It made it a lot easier to uh, purchase Apple products because they are a bit pricey. But tablets are very gettable, so um, Procreate is just a program you can put on there. And I'm going to show you how to use it today, so let's check it out. Here we go. Oh, this way. Oh, oh, oh. My geese! Okay, messing with Procreate today. Gonna be using the screen size for maximum pixels. Our printing size is about this A4 9 by 12, but we would use that. Uh, at the very end uh, to figure out the size we're going to print on, but to work on we're going to use this screen size project. All right, we got a picture imported into Procreate. This is a cool orchid that my husband likes. I'm going to try to turn it into a tattoo to put on his calf. We're going to want to trace this out and I'm going to show you how I trace this out in Procreate. I'm going to figure out what scale I want here. I like making it big so I can get all the details. I can always minimize it later. I'm going to go with kind of a, a realism. Are we doing color? Mm -hmm. So I got to plan out how I'm going to do that. After importing your image, you want to start a new layer, pick a color that you like uh, that will stand out on top of the image. Floaty Lady Purple usually works for me. And uh, I'm going to pick out my brush size here. Let's see which one we have. We're on the Studio Pen. I've seen people use Studio Pen, uh, Technical Pen, just a little smaller. Um, I think Studio Pen is probably a little bit more like what your tattoo needle sizes are. Based on the brush sizes here. And then you're going to want to decide if you want Streamline or not. Streamline just kind of smooths out the edges here. For the initial design phase, I usually have that all the way down, so it's more like drawing. And then uh, we can always add a new layer on top if we're gonna do a final stencil. So the stencil process for me is not just a one-time process. Sometimes I'll do two or three layers until I get the stencil the way I want. So it's really not even stenciling as much as it is the actual design. I've found this is just a way to cut time for me. <laughs> uh, and I find that it's also helpful to pick out the lines and the and the values in your design process phase so that when you go to tattoo it you kind of have an idea of what you planned so yeah so anyway that's what i'm up to so i'm gonna go with the size three brush and then you know we'll have to decide are we gonna line this thing with a thick bold traditional style uh, 
for LT. I don't know. His legs got some traditional stuff on there, but I think he wants to start moving away from those thick, bold lines. Mm -hmm. So we could line this with like a fat line, you know, uh, and consider actually tattooing it that way. But for now, we're just going to line everything in the same uh, thickness. Uh, one of the things you can do to in advance if if it suits your fancy. The liquefied tool is pretty fun. I think it works better in Procreate than Photoshop for sure. Uh, and if you're trying to fit a certain area and you want, like this is a very symmetrical piece. So to me, I see it as a as a front or a back piece, but uh, we're putting it on the side. So we could break up the asymmetry a little bit if we wanted to, and, you know, kind of push some of the edges out here, bend the whole thing. I mean, another option is to free transform. You can distort the image. These are just general things you can do. Um, back in the same setting, you can go to warp and play around with uh, the image that way and you can have fun you could do like some stylized uh, flowers I mean you could get crazy but uh, for me I like to just copy what's there first and then at the end uh, you can also liquefy your stencil to give it a little personality so You'll just have the reference image will be the original image. It won't be the liquefied version. So I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> thoughts. These are just thoughts, random thoughts. So maybe my line could be a little smoother for these edges. I might want my streamline up just a little bit on these. Just to help out my own hand. Um, in Procreate, there's a feature too, if you were to hold down at the end of a line, I'm going to come off a little to show you this. It just, uh, kind of creates a curve of whatever you did, or if you're doing a straight line, it'll just make a boop straight line. I think these are like pretty simple things on Procreate. You probably already figured out, but Hey, this is tattoo for beginners here on Floaty Leaf Channel. We're figuring out together. There's no wrong questions. Line, 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 line. <laughs> All right, more petals. So as I'm lining this thing and looking at the picture, I'm sort of noticing the texture of this flower. It's kind of like a succulent. It's not though, right? It's, mm -hmm. an, it's an orchid, right? Mm -hmm. So the petals seem thick though, right? Yes. They're like thick and waxy, sort of like a second. Mm hmm Uh, I think like, right in here where this line passes through might be a good place to drop your brush size.
You can go down to a one. That doesn't mean you're like doing a mono needle. It's just, it could be a really light three or a, an eight gauge versus a 10. <clears throat> Or a standard versus an eight. Will you see it on the printer? Yes. I figured out how to print um, down to a one, no problem, on the printer. If you're using the eco stencil stuff, it's no issue. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do this stuff uh, by hand. <laughs> anyway, so. The question, I guess it would seem pointless to uh, get invested in this form of stenciling unless you could print those small things, but yeah, you can. It's sort of opening up the possibilities to what you can put in a stencil. So for realism with all the detail, how are you gonna you could draw it by hand and just take forever. And if you need to uh, make a new stencil over and over again, like we've noticed happens, you're gonna wanna be able to print it. So yeah, complex realism projects, eco stencils. Is it called Eco Tank? The Eco Tank printer. The Eco Tank printer eco by Stencils Eco Stencils Inc. <laughs> what brand is it though? Epson. Of course. What isn't an Epson? <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Canon and Epson really are the two printers. That's it. But there's no other contenders really, are there? HPs, but they're not really contenders. No. I don't think contend. Photo printing has been a pain in the ass forever. Um, the ink seems to be lasting a really long time on our printer, by the way, so we're really happy about that. Okay, so just going back to the three, finish lining. So nice, you can delete constantly as many times as you fucking want. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I shouldn't talk like that. Delete, do you know how to delete and procreate? You can just touch the screen, two fingers. If you don't know that, you probably shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> we gotta go back. Gotta go back a little. Do I like Procreate better than drawing on paper? Yes, because I can erase so easily. <laughs> Just two fingers, it's so fast. I love it. All right, so, um, back to the top here. So, we have a hard outline here, so what we're telling ourselves later that that's a hard outline to tattoo. Uh, around but truly uh, the edges of this plant are bright so uh, 
really what I should be keeping in mind when I do this tattoo on LT is if I want it to look more realistic, if that's what I'm going for, to have lighter edges. But I think it would be cool to make it a little more illustrative. So I like the lined edges too. What do you think? Do you want it to be like a high realism piece? You want me to go yeah. for that type thing? Yeah. In black and gray, and then we'll add the color. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just think when I do this part though, I should do it in the in the deep red tones there. Mm -hmm. We'll never get white into you. Use my skin with the white. That's the. Yeah, here, I got it. So, to make the white part pop, so we have uh, light and dark here. We can do it with gray or red or whatever. But then, uh, over in the back here, the green has to be uh, filled in so that, like, there's a gray tone across the entire leaf in the back, but the edges are lighter. So that, that darker neutral gray in the middle will allow this part to pop more in front. Sounds good. I think that might work. So now if we want to see what that might look like, let's, um, let's see what it actually looks like in black and gray. It looks awesome. So. I say we go, I say we go black and gray. It's kind of awesome, babe. Yeah. Look at it, black you, and gray. You can always Looks put great. It, it does, it does. All right. You can always put in color over it later too. Put in awesome text, babe. Yeah, so since uh, black and gray is kind of my thing right now and that's where I want to go with this, I'm going to focus on turning it into a black and gray thing. The client, how's the client feel about it? Let's start black and gray. Yeah, it looks good. And then maybe start pushing some greens into the gray in the background. Does he just put the color right over the light gray? Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're gonna try to do then. All right, thanks Pony Lawson for the tip. Cool. So basically the outer line here is just a guide and I'm gonna just make a mental note of that. Uh, I could line it again where I'm not touching the edge of the leaf as much here in some of these parts. But yeah, that's basically, I think that'd be the best way to get the edges done. Thinking in black and gray is a lot different than illustration. One of the things I've run into is like making your realism piece accidentally look a little bit too illustrative by putting too many lines, heavy lines in the wrong places. Um, so a lot of these artists don't seem to be using lines at all, but I love the three round liner. I love the effect it has on the edges of things and stipple shading with it, but also I just, I like the way it looks. I like the way things look lined, so. To me, I want to try to combine the two together a little bit. That's kind of where I'm at. Like you can use mags for everything, but it's better to use different tools, just like when you're doing a painting, using different brushes are going to give you different effects. So the more tools you utilize, the more depth your image is going to have. I know these concepts, putting them into action is a different thing. And that's um, always a do as I say, not as I do kind of thing, but watch me break my own rules like a million times. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of detail. So if you really like get a high res image, you can zoom in and appreciate how edges work. 
So if you're going for realism and you're uh, making a stencil here, for example, here's a spot on the leaf. The edges are not um, well defined, they're feathery. So let's put that into our stencil rather than just base a basic outline of these uh, to sort of clue us in when we're clue myself in. I'm going to start talking to the third person here, but um, clue myself in when I'm doing the tattoo that the edges are not well defined. So I could do this maybe with a round shader, or I could try to do my own sort of feathering effect. So I think that that's kind of fun picking up on the texture of the leaf a little more. Um, how much is too much? I'm still figuring that out, honestly. Uh, I see a lot of guys simplifying it quite a bit, so I'm definitely doing more. If you're here to get like a simple stencil, just shut the shit off right now. <laughs> shut your fucking shit off right now. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. But if you want something fucking cool, challenging, keep watching. <laughs> This is by far probably one of my more <laughs> simple stencils too, by the way. When you're getting into portraiture and faces, you're going to want to pick out a lot more values than this. So if you look at this image, we really only have a few values. A face has a lot more, and so there's a lot more simplifying that needs to happen a lot more contrast and um, alteration. I feel like this flower didn't need much altering as far as contrast goes, because it's already like a high contrast piece. So one of the things I did do before I put uh, this flower into Procreate was um, up the sharpness uh, in, in the Photos app. The Photos app has a pretty good editor in it, and uh, I recommend uh, increasing the details of the image as much as possible and, and getting the, as much sharpness as you can out of it without um, completing, completely altering the image. Um, you'll know right away if you have a good quality image when you try to do that too. I mean, it just helps it get a little better. Mm -hmm. It helps blend the lines together. You don't want more lines. You're trying to tattoo this thing. So you're trying to simplify it as much as possible prior to making your stencil. But the problem is that faces are really complex. So this flower is a good place to start, I guess, if you're trying to go a little more simple. And then um, I'll make another video on how to do faces. I know that's probably something people want to see. So smash that like button, subscribe. You want me to keep doing this shit? I mean, smash that like button, subscribe, because you like me. You wanna hang with me while we chase this me. And now we're gonna speed up this part. Yeah. Go. Can I say something to all those um, nature artists out there? If you're creating something in nature that, and you're just doing like a realistic copy of it and then you notice that a part of the design looks oddly like a penis, I would just like change that. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, that's all.
Don't be worried if you're not fast at this at first. I'm definitely not fast at it. And I go back and erase things that I think look sloppy. Just because you're tracing it once doesn't mean you're gonna get it right on the line. Um, sometimes I see things better after I mess it up once. I don't know if that makes any sense. Revise, revise, revise. There's only, I'm sure there's people in the world who just are naturally, boom, one pass perfection. <laughs> one pass of the perfection. <laughs> Sorry. Working on silicone is annoying, but it's a good way to plan things out. So this one might be a good one to do on silicone first. Maybe even leather <laughs> things actually. Very uh, leather worthy, I think. If you want to see tattooing leather, check out my video below. Is it below? Is it to the left? Is it up? Down? It's down, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I actually don't use the internet. <laughs> <laughs> at all. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I use the internet. I have to. But if I didn't have to, <laughs> I'll, I would just use Procreate. <laughs> but then I need to surf the internet for pictures, so I'm stuck. The internet is a must. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, a lot of the time I'm just focusing on my work. My husband is uh, pulling the strings sometimes for the social media stuff, but I'm right here. He's he's relaying everything to me, so. <laughs> Let him know how you feel. <laughs> And I will respond through him. If I'll turn out you jokesters out there. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so let's see how this thing's looking. Uh huh. Yeah. It's looking really cool. The natural pattern on this flower is so neat. I don't think I could just draw this naturally on my own. My version of it would be a lot different. But just to show you kind of along the way here, what I meant by liquefying the stencil is like if you wanted to alter these shapes, for example, or make them bigger, you know, or change the shape of the leaf, you could do that at this point. I'll make it a little more bulbous. A little longer. Um, you know, there's 
a way to make it smaller in certain parts too. In there. All the tools. But yeah, personally, I want to get everything done first before I start messing around. Just showing you how you can alter things at the very end if you want to. And yeah, pretty much follow the same guide and, and get everything in there. But the best way, honestly, is just to get your image the way you want it in advance. So that when you have your stencil on it, or when you're done with your stencil, you also have a reference guide. One of the mistakes I've made is like wanting to go back and play with the, the image layer after I've already started my stencil. So, you know, try to get, get the image layer the way you want before you start messing with the stencil so you don't have to go back in, in your work and it takes more time and things like that. But unfortunately, that's just somehow, sometimes how people learn. Yeah, there's no right way to do things. You can't really be afraid to make mistakes either. In this process especially, I mean, you just kind of got to keep pushing through, see what you can get out of your stencil here of your image. If your image is not high enough quality, it's going to be pretty hard to trace and um, you'll have to use a little more of your imagination to create the image. I'm cool with that. I actually can get quite a bit from even a lower res image sometimes, I've noticed. But um, yeah, if you don't feel confident in your drawing skills and things like that, I would definitely make sure you're always getting the highest res images possible uh, to create your stencils. If you really want to be anal, you can zoom in. That's what Procreate's for. So now looking at this one, I just traced some like, yeah, I could probably trace that better. So it's good to critique yourself, but see how close I can get to these lines. So you cannot really do this with a regular tracing paper and a light box, the old fashioned way, although I have done both, so I know there are some nice things about the, the light box and the tracing method. But tracing on Procreate is pretty awesome. I feel like uh, zooming in made me go a bit faster here too, so gentle note that that's helpful. <clears throat> you just kind of get lost in where you're at too, so you should zoom out once in a while. On this kind of thing, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> but when you're doing a portrait, you definitely want to keep zooming out <laughs> and back in, I would say, just to keep track of where you're at if you're doing too much. I had really no idea what I could and couldn't stencil 
when I started, I'm starting to figure out contrast is really the, the big key here uh, in an image. What you can and can't tattoo uh, stencil wise just um, depends on the size of the piece you're going to do usually. for the amount of little details you can include. Generally for botanical stencils, uh, you want to consider what needles you're using in advance. Um, even for the stencil portion, I would say, right? Are you going to end up doing your uh, shading with entirely a through run liner or mags? That's pretty much your main big decision. Or both. Botanical stencil. I don't know what to say about this beautiful vaginal orchid other than, oh, keeps. <laughs> <laughs> wow, was that like a dad joke? That was very much a dad joke. <laughs> By the way, if any of you were wondering about going from silicone to skin and that process, uh, I will tell you it only took two sessions for me to completely adapt to working on skin, to seeing the blood, seeing the, the um, white blood cells, all that good stuff, uh, plasma. Yeah, it doesn't bug me. It was like one or two times. I know it is my husband though, so it might be different when I'm doing it on someone else, but it seemed to go away pretty quickly. So don't worry about it. If you're worried about your first time tattooing in that type of way, the design process takes over and your mind is pretty distracted by that, so. Also not not damaging the skin, so it's good to pay attention to how the skin's doing along the way. Oh, and then going back to silicone after trying skin for the first time and doing skin actually two or three weekends in a row, right? Um, when I went back to silicone, I realized there is a major difference between the two um, as far as how the values get in. So uh, with silicone, you're definitely going to go from zero to 60 super fast. <laughs> so with real skin, you're not, with actual human skin, you're not going to have that problem as much. And so don't worry, but the redness is going to make it deceiving as to how dark you're getting as well. So there's, it has its, its limitations for values, but it's in a different way. So does one set you up for the other one? Kind of, but just in the sense of being constantly uh, paranoid that you're going to get too dark. <laughs> yes. So the way I tackled it my first time is I'm working with somebody who doesn't mind taking a while and we're doing it in layers. I'm letting it heal and I'm seeing how dark things are getting and I'm just going slowly. So that's 
what I would recommend finding somebody who doesn't mind you kind of tattooing them slowly along the way. Or you can just fuck someone up the first time, whatever you want to do, that's fine. <laughs> uh, I don't recommend screwing people up. <laughs> uh, if you can try to avoid it, that'd be great. But I know it's a learning process. You gotta break a few eggs if you wanna make an omelet. Uh, not sure how your clients are gonna feel about that. Maybe make sure it's cousin. <laughs> cousin Phil. Or maybe that chick Erica. You knew from back in the day <laughs> that you just really don't care what happens to her. <laughs> this is dark. Uh, <laughs> you should care about people. Uh, these are dark thoughts. You should make a good canvas. No, I mean, like, how? it's hard. How are you going to find people to help you, really? It's just, um, for me, um, uh, it, it was just oh hey jenna's learning how to tattoo cool uh i will like love to help out so hopefully you got friends as cool as my friends and as cool as my husband they also just like my work already which is pretty awesome because i'm just a beginner but with your guys's help hopefully we'll build this into something so please 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 smash that like button subscribe to my channel you're gonna get tips and tricks along the way here as I learn, I'm sure. I also buy and review products. Uh, especially tattoo pens on Amazon. If you're looking for your first tattoo rotary pen. If you're looking for something heavy duty, like the real deal, and you don't have as much of a budget, I recommend the NUMA. The worst thing ever is when you go back up here and you realize you're on the frickin' layer, the image layer. Don't do that. So check, check, make sure you're on the, the right layer. <laughs> Obvious things, but. Look at that leaf. Look at it. So now I'm kind of getting into these smaller things here. They're a nice guide for if I'm doing some stipple shading here where I can focus on these larger dots. This is gonna be a fun pattern um, to work with for sure. Uh, now, if you look closely here, there's another element to the, the leaf, um, I guess petal, it's a petal. It's a very leafy petal. And there are some vertical striations here. You may or may not see them. Um, let's see. If I zoom out, you might see them more. So uh, there is another element to this leaf here. There's some lines going across it this way. So I think it would be cool to show a hint of that. It's something I'm seeing on the other side as well, right in there. So how can we pick that out stencil wise? Um, so what we have so far here is really an outline of the patterning on the leaves. Um, so they're all hard lines and that is indicating to me that I'm going to be doing uh, hard black lines there uh, or whatever color I want. Solid lines, I should say, uh, and not shading. So that's the plan for those areas. Uh, how do we create value, I guess, 
uh, on top of that to make this three-dimensional aspect come through. And how do we, um, this is getting a little more complex into how to do the stencil. So you just change over to dashed lines. There's really, it's not that complicated, but. <laughs> this is if you're gonna pick this stuff out. So I'm just gonna give myself a general guide as to where these were, where I could actually see them in the piece here. Um, they might help me later. Basically, I'm putting dashes where I see shadows on the leaf to simplify it more. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now I've created another texture element there that I might be able to pull into um, Pull into my black and gray work. So these lines now give me a sense of the direction and the pull of the leaf here. And I'm not going to actually stencil that part that's just a guide and the dashes are my indicator not to basically create a hard line there and so that's that's like the basic guideline for doing shading uh, and then if you want to get into the portrait stuff that that's going to be a little more complex and I'll show you how to do that stuff later We'll go back to this layer. Miss some stuff over here. Fast forward. Thank you, bye. Yeah, so now I have um, the design with the line showing where the shading is going to be. The petal itself has a shape separate from the design on top, so that's gonna those guides are just gonna help me kind of uh, to show that impression of the leaf or the the petal. They're very leafy petals. That's why I keep saying leaf. By the way, <laughs> you could think of them more like leaves, actually succulent kind of uh, petals. So. I want to bring out that shape, that thickness. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of the things I could do also in this shading layer of the stencil here is maybe pick out some of the, the edges here. So there are some dashes I could put here where I see some shadows. And um, I could potentially bring that up a little. And I think that's a good little tip to make the edge of things look a little thicker. This may not be right for every flower, but it certainly looks right for this one. If you wanted to smooth out your stencil, remember you can always drop it into um, another app like Capture or Illustrator if you wanna uh, create a smooth, smoother lines. I personally don't mind <laughs> having my own lines 
it's realistic to what I'm actually going to be able to tattoo anyway. So I don't see that making the lines even smoother is going to help any. It also takes away a little bit of the gesture, I think, of the piece. So for me, I actually don't, I don't drop it in capture at the end, uh, but it's definitely a method that I've seen work too with certain things. Let's get into, now I'm making different layers for the stencil just in case I screw up one part and wanna erase just that. Um, so now I'm making another layer for this white part in the middle. So when I draw a line, I'm telling myself to create a hard line. If I want to create more like a gray line, uh, that's something I think it's helpful to have some dots for here. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with these edges, but here's a nice solid line because I have black on the other side of it. Dashes. This is pretty dark uh, for lining, so I'm not worried that these, if I want really light areas, you can do dashes that are far apart. If your dashes are closer together, I feel like you're telling yourself that's a more of a shadowy area. This is just something I'm developing myself and uh, hopefully can help other people out too. Um, so, you know, these are black lines that I'm going to do in the final project versus gray lines. You know, I have to decide if this is going to be red even. Um, so it's something I'm taking into account as I'm creating the stencil here. I'm actually going to do... dotted lines. Let's see that if that shows up well. Yeah, so you can kind of see the difference there. I'm just kind of reminding myself too to look at your reference image as you work. These are such tiny details. You can't really get away with the dashes, I guess. So this is not really a hard black line, I would say. These are gonna be a little bit more shaded. If you look closely, there is actually a light and dark half on this uh, middle stamen petal <laughs> clit looking thing, whatever you call it. This would be the <laughs> anatomically mm -hmm. uh, the little hood over here <laughs> has some light coming from behind it, I notice as I zoom in here. So that might be something I think about when I'm shading it. Depends how big it's gonna be. Yeah, I just feel like these details will look better using maybe like a round shader with like a nice wash. Round shader doesn't have as much of the hard edge, so you're gonna get these softer designs here on the petals, I think better. You could do the same thing back here or you could change it up to make it actually look the petals here my plan is to actually use 
my eight round liner to create the the borders on these designs here uh, and I'll just have to show you my technique for that but basically just a light feathering as I just like when I was drawing it with the needle over here I think I'll use a, a round shader and then right in here this is gonna have to be an eight round liner because it's some detail so it realistically the patterning here on this part of the flower is probably just gonna mesh together just because there's so much detail there. How big are we making it on his leg? Probably, oh, yay big. So if this was <clears throat> realistically the size here, maybe right there, right there we see very, very light, faint lines there. So that's like a tempting spot with the mono needle. <laughs> Might wanna try hitting those up. So um, should I stencil that, I guess is the question, or should I just create a little boundary there and kind of figure it out as I go on his leg? Cause realistically a stencil of this area here is probably not going to translate well on skin um then again the eco stencil is pretty good so well let's give it a challenge and see what happens with that we'll go to the brush size one and let's pick out all the, the whites uh we can pick out the whites in this section because they're surrounded by a uh, darker color so it makes sense if we were to be picking out the whites from a grayer area, we'd want to use a dotted line like so. That's my method. I think some people just pick out the whites. I'm picking out the whites on this one because the dark line around it is something that I can actually tattoo. There are lines around it. But um, this might be an area I just wanna hit with the mag. We'll see. Try to pick up some of these cool little patterns here, you know. Organic patterns are really hard to replicate. That's why I like tracing flowers. <laughs> so this flower's got a fun ridge of teeth here I think we might want to play with and so I'm going to hold off on stenciling that area um so let me show you how I would stencil this uh, lighter area here This is a good example of where you would just use some dashes. See, this is all just gray shaded area. 
in the shape of sort of like a heart here in the middle. And there's more kind of gray up here, so I'm just gonna add another little layer like that. I kind of just end up making a stipple project as my stencils. And here we go. So down here, another little stippled area to show all the gray, picking out the gray with the dashed line. Look, here's a hard line because this area is dark around the petal. So that's basically how I do it. And I can show you another project here real quick, just briefly that I'm working on uh, of Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, so this is a Marilyn Monroe portrait by Richard Avedon. It's one of my favorite pictures of her. It's probably the highest res one I could find. Good example of how a lower quality image can be turned into a stencil. So, um, here's kind of what I've gotten done so far and as you can see I sort of simplified the shapes it is starting to look like Marilyn Monroe so I think I'm um, getting the effect out of it uh, I'm gonna try putting this on some silicone and we'll see how how that's working out but here's uh, all the dashes the dashed lines indicating the gray areas um, and these harder black lines or harder solid lines here where the the black is bordering the image um, and then uh, More dash lines here for the outer edges You know, it just depends on what style you're going for I do like the look of portraits when they're a little bit outlined on the skin. I think it looks good uh, But I'll use like a gray wash for the outline so yeah, so that's kind of an example of how to use it on a portrait, but we're doing this flower project next on my husband and it's looking really, really detailed. It's getting to the point where we, my husband and I are gonna have to figure out what size is going on his leg, uh, probably before I keep going here and whether or not I'm gonna turn this part of the flower into some kind of crazy mouth, I just decided. So we're gonna go over that and uh, see if we can't make this kind of neat just in case it ends up working <laughs> mm -hmm. things like even shape like <laughs> this looks crazy oh my god why'd you leave right then this is like such bad time baby look at this it's it. like the same shape and everything i see it yeah that's perfect <laughs> oh, yeah. It's hilarious. Do it. Yeah. Do it. We need to do that. Yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ideas. Well, how big should it be? Because, like, Match the size. it should be a good size. Like, yeah. yeah, like, maybe even the mouth should be, like, really big. Like, that's how big the mouth is there. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Right there. Yeah. Oh, my God. We're getting creative here. I'll float it, baby. So again, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Figure out your whole design first before you start stenciling. We're just gonna turn our stencils off here. It's okay, it's okay. Mistakes happen. We don't judge on Fluidity Lady Channel. It's all a learning learning environment here. <laughs> what? <laughs> One of my pet peeves is when people make you feel bad about asking questions or, or learning. And it seems like that happens a lot in the tattoo world. There's a lot of this attitude, like you need to do an apprenticeship. That's the only way you're gonna learn. Like, yeah, you don't know how to do that because you didn't do an apprenticeship. Well, a lot of people I've talked to have, didn't get that out of their apprenticeship. Spent a lot of time and effort and money. And uh, yeah. Some people don't have that <laughs> time for me uh, is, is my limitation. So I love tattooing, I've always loved tattooing, always been a huge fan of tattoos. I'm so excited that I'm starting to get into it now. Um, always been a surrealist, always been into three-dimensional art. 
and photography, check out my photography page. Uh, that's the floaty lady. Just floaty. Just floaty lady. <laughs> On IG. If you want to see some of my uh, photography work, probably start incorporating some of those ideas into my stuff. So, yeah, hope you guys like it. Stay tuned for Shark, shark Flower. <laughs> Keep watching. So basically, I mean, dro dropping it on there and then uh, got to figure out how to blend in the flower here. So what are we going to do? We got to get rid of all the shark parts except for the mouth. We don't need it to... Do you want the nose? The shark no, nose? No, so what's funny is this flower actually is already shaped like this. If you're doing a metamorphosis project, it sure as shit is going to help if you choose objects of similar shapes. Objects or things, people, animals, similar. I kind of like the idea of maybe blending in some water here down on the petal, but um, realistically, I have to be, you know, honest about my limitations here. Where's the mouth going? Immediately, it was my first uh, erase. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do here. While I'm erasing, I'm just gonna get my opacity all the way up so I can see what I'm doing better here. Um, uh, check out some of my past stencils are available for download if you wanna practice on silicone. Uh, I made them available on my floatyladytattoo.com page. But it could be eating something, I guess. Well, I was thinking an eyeball inside there would look cool, too. Like a floating eyeball? No, like the shark's mouth is the eyelids. The shark's mouth is the eyelids? Yeah. Like, oh. Just like an eyeball. Oh in, my god, instead in, of a mouth? Yeah, instead of a deep mouth. Yeah. Instead of a throat? Yeah. Do you want to go choose, look online and choose an eyeball? Sure. How big is this going to be? We don't have to put it like totally symmetrical. I guess we can place it kind of crooked too. Yeah. Just fit it in around the other touch. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here I'm gonna um, see if maybe one of these uh, layer settings can actually blend in the teeth for me. That wasn't bad right there for the top row, but darker color didn't seem to do it. Hard light's not bad. Linear light's kind of creepy. Luminosity is usually a good choice. Uh, it did desaturate it, which is. I didn't know that was part of it. But. I'm gonna go back to the uh, hard light, I think, or linear light. The top row is working really well. The bottom row is a little tricky. stick with the normal <laughs> and just change the opacity a little bit 
So now I can just include these teeth into my stencil. Let's do a new layer for that. I see the lines that I already put in there. They're remarkably close, so teeth just go like this. So I like to have fun with texture. I think I'm going to try to pull in some of the details here of the shark's gums. It kind of blends well with flower. What's going on here? I'm not going to just see here. Some shit in his mouth. Oh, that's an A. <laughs> yeah, we can work around that. You can see these areas that I'm drawing in are not hard lines, so I'm just doing some dot work here as my stencil. I'm just bringing out from the where I'm going to put this mouth line, these teeth, blending it into the lines of this flower. Okay, so the blend area looks right now. So now I think I can go back and do the jaw better. I guess the jaw is still there. Okay. Back to the shark layer. You can rename your layers if you want. I tend to not do that because I'm lazy. But let's do it.
Just moving around the flower to match now with the mouth kind of in the direction it's going. And then just plopping the flower again, sort of going back and forth between the shark layer and the flower, the middle flower layer here. So how can I combine these things together? some teeth here.
right, so here's the stencil. Uh, it's pretty detailed. Very, very detailed, actually. Looks awesome. I think I could do it with 8 gauge 3 liner. Should be good. See the shark in there? Pretty fucking awesome. Pretty cool. It's a shark orchid. Thanks for watching, guys. It was lovely. Check out my shark. <laughs> it's a sharkid. Well, congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. You better smash that like button and subscribe to the Floaty Lady channel. I have more tips and tricks for you coming in the future and I would love to share more of my art with you as we go. This thing's probably gonna end up on my husband, so that will be pretty rad to watch too. Okay. Thank you, man.